Bailey Avenue. How are you, my little kids? I hope you're doing great. I miss all of you. The weather's getting nice. Um, so this week, I thought you could get outside for your project. Um, if you already watched Mrs. McGill's video today, this week, that has to do with rocks, you're in luck. My art project has to do with rocks, too. So rock on. I'm just kidding. Um, anyways, um, I want to talk about one of the earliest examples of rock art. It is not a rock that looks like this, but one of the earliest examples of art ever found was a cave called the Lesco Cave in France. Two teenagers were walking and their dog started barking. Woof, 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 woof. And they came across a cave and in the cave, they saw all these scenes and pictures and they were able to date it. And it's one of the earliest examples of primitive art. Um, the name of the cave was called Let's Go Cave. And on the walls, I'm gonna show you a couple pictures in a minute, were scenes from their life during the prehistoric times. So what were some things that were important during those times? Fire, the caveman needed fire to live, right? To stay warm and to cook their food. Hunting, so there were hunting scenes that were depicted or shown on the walls. Um, what else? Oh, animals, because the animals provided the food for the cavemen to eat. So that is a great example of early rock painting. And today's assignment, you're gonna get outside. Don't worry, you don't have to go to a cave and start doing your artwork on the walls. If you find one, that could be cool. But you are gonna go outside and look for a rock. Um, one of the most important things that you're gonna look for when you select your rock is, is your rock smooth? Is it gonna be easy to decorate? One great area to go to to get some good smooth rocks would be Pointer Rush at the Pointer Rush Beach. And along the sides where the trails are, there's tons of different rocks. So this one I picked because it looks like a diamond. I like this one a lot. So you want to make sure that it's smooth and you also want to look at its shape. So I selected it because it's smooth and the shape looks like a diamond. So good luck finding your rock and I'm going to talk about how we're going to decorate it in a minute. All right guys, I hope you're well and enjoy the lesson. I'll see you here next week. Bye. All right guys, rock art. Here we go. We just talked about the early example of rock art, which was the Lesco Caves in France. I'm going to give you a link so you can go in there. It'd be really cool if we had virtual goggles and we could tour it together if we were in school, but we don't have that right now. That's okay. I'll put a link up. Tips for picking the perfect rock. You want a smooth rock so that you can paint on it easily. If you don't have paint, as always, you can substitute materials. You can use marker like Sharpie. You could use chalk. Just use the materials that you have around. And then you want to focus on the shape of the rock. So here's my rock, it's a diamond, okay? I like that shape a lot. So it's nice and smooth and it's a diamond shape. And these are the elements of art. We talk a lot about the principles and the elements of art in class um, that we want to focus on when we are decorating our rock. You wanna think about line. You wanna think about shape. Maybe you're really creative and you do a pattern, either using shape or line or color somewhere on your rock. And you also wanna think about the color that you're gonna use or select. Um, and possibly texture. Okay, so this is what we're focusing on this week. And again, it goes with Mrs. McGill's rock assignment. So I hope that you have fun. And I'm gonna show you how I decorated mine. And then I have my kid example by Scarlett in just a minute. All right, bye. Okay guys, here's one of my rocks. Can you guess what it is? It is a slice of key lime pie. This rock is a triangle. When I saw it, it just reminded me of a slice of pie. So when I painted it, I thought about the sides and those are the layers of the, of the pie. And you have to have the crust. It could have also been a pepperoni slice of pizza, but I didn't do pizza, I did key lime pie. And then I went to do my face and I painted it. And then actually I used Sharpie to go over it to add some detail. So I was just trying to do a cute little face. Do you recognize um, what I used for the nose? It's a cherry. 
Um, my daughter helped me out a little bit with this. So it's not perfect, but hey, they never are. So there is my key lime slice of pie. Super cute. I like it a lot. Um, and then I want to talk about this one. My daughter did this one. So she focused, there's my diamond rock on color and a pattern. So she did repeating lines and shapes. Um, so she did her color, which is not repeating, but she repeated the diamond shape. So she has a diamond within a diamond within a diamond. And then she added her face. Now, if we were to put these outside, something that's really important to add to your rock would be a varnish. If you don't have that at home, that's okay. Uh, types of varnishes. You could get them at Michael's or if you have them because stores stores are kind of closed right now. Any type of varnish would work if you have that at home. If you don't, don't worry about it. The only thing that might happen is that the paint might fade away. One thing that I like to use for a varnish, and I just happen to have it at home, this is something I have, is Mod Podge. Um, there's a glossy varnish that they make, and I use it all the time. Mod Podge is also cool because if I wanted to add anything three-dimensional to my rocks, like um, flowers, some found materials that I find outside, Mod Podge will help attach it to your rock, preserve it. It will stay that way for a really long time. And if it goes outside to outdoor weather, it's going to protect it. So also put some other pictures of different types of varnish. So this is particularly important if you go to Oak Street and you plan on dropping off your rock to the rock garden, I would suggest using some kind of varnish um, just to protect it from the elements that we have. If you don't get to do that, that's perfectly okay. And again, if you can't, if you don't have paint at home, just be really creative about the types of materials that you use that can work. Um, I'll put up different links for you, but you can definitely use markers. That's an option for sure. All right, so have fun. Here's my project. Focus. This one's focused on shape. And then here's my pie. All right. So have fun, guys. I can't wait to see what you come up with. I'm going to take a stroll by Oak Street and see if there's new rocks out. All right, so you made Mrs. Brandon Meyer very happy and you made me happy as well, and I'll check back with you next week. All right, guys, have a good day, bye.